Hey guys, Stephanie here, and I'm headed to the garage to do a very important task that you need to stay on top of if you're growing food aeroponically. This is about maximizing the vegetables we can grow indoors during winter, and there's one secret to having a huge success with that. All right, guys, welcome to the garage. And here are all the towers, our home gym's in the back there. And you can see they are exploding with growth. And I have a fan here, and if you're new to aeroponics, and if you do have your vegetables growing indoors during the winter, it's a good idea to put a fan on those. It helps to pollinate things that might need help pollinating, and just keeps airflow for things like squash and zucchini so that they don't get any uh, funguses or diseases. So you guys can see I have a ton of vegetables that are growing indoors in winter and just really, really taking off. And there's a secret to having vertical towers that look like this. These are automated hydroponic systems. I don't have to do a lot, but I have to do one very, very important thing. Every two to three weeks, if I want my towers to look like this, and if I want to be able to come out here and harvest amazing food every day, 365 days a year. So this right here is the most important thing you need to be doing and staying on top of if you want to have an indoor vegetable garden during the winter or if you want to grow food 365 days a year and make sure you have food that you can come and harvest any day of the week. And that's starting your seeds. So one common mistake I see is that when you initially get a tower garden or an aeroponics system, it can take a couple of months to go from seedlings to starting to see some real growth on the tower. That first initial setup, it just takes a little bit of time because you're doing all your, you're starting all your plants at one time and it just takes time. Some of them grow slower than others. And when it gets set up, and you finally have that going, what can happen, and this happens with my gardens outside too, I think as gardeners or when we're growing food, we're afraid to eat things because they don't quite look like they're ready yet. And it, we want it to be the biggest and you know grandest version of itself before we actually eat it. So we may come out here and go, okay, that needs another week, that needs another day, I'm gonna wait on that one. And we go back in the house empty handed and we're not actually eating the food off of our tower. And I'm still guilty of that. I still come out here and think I'm eyeing a cabbage over here to my left because I keep saying, no, I want it to get a little bit bigger, I want it to be a bigger head instead of eating it. And I still do that. I come out here and I think, well, that lettuce isn't as big as I want it to be. So maybe I'll try something else. Or maybe I'll just wait until tomorrow. And we want to move away from that for a couple of reasons. For one, this allows us to save money on groceries. And if we're eating food off of it, we're not having to buy other things. And number two, we get the nutrients and the health benefits. This is the freshest food you're ever gonna have access to. And we get to put that in our bodies every single day, which makes an impact over time. I just went and pulled out this Chinese cabbage to give you an example of something that isn't quite ready yet. Like this can get a tighter head. It actually can get very Napa cabbage look but if I need food for dinner, this is an option. This is big enough. And if I have seeds started and I look over to my seedling area and there's plants that need a home or need a spot to start growing, then I'm more motivated to take this out and eat it and allow that plant to have a space so it can start to grow. So that's why I stick to a very specific formula for growing food aeroponically. It's better to eat this and to put a new plant in and to have food from the gardens going into our bodies every single day than to wait for this to be absolutely perfect. So my seed starting formula is pretty simple. I just came up with a little bit of math that over time I have found works the best. And you may have to tweak it a little bit. You know, you may do a little bit less seeds or wait an extra week instead of every two weeks, you're planting every three weeks just based on your habits of how you use your garden. But overall, it's a good base to start with. So the formula is every two weeks, you want to take a quarter of the number of spots you have, grow spots on your tower, and start that many seeds. So what that looks like is if I have an aeroponic tower that has 32 grow ports, then I want to be starting eight seeds every two weeks. 
I'm not going to be starting the same seeds over and over and over again unless I just eat one or two particular things. I'm going to be thinking about, okay, what herbs do I want to make sure I always have? And herbs take a little bit longer and last longer on the tower. Lettuce is a very fast turnover. You can put your lettuce seeds in and have a full harvest in four to five weeks once your seedlings go into the tower. So you have to be mindful of that too. So let's assume I have eight, I have 32 growth spots. So I'm going to start eight seedlings every two weeks. And I like to eat two heads of lettuce a week. I love to have dill, access to dill full time. Um, I'm a huge fan of keeping celery on my tower and growing that for juicing and just for soups and recipes. And what else? Let's see, some kale and maybe some snap peas. So those are my favorite foods. So every two weeks, I need to go look at my tower and I'm definitely gonna be starting lettuce seeds. If I want two heads of lettuce per week, I need to probably have four of those eight be lettuce because lettuce grows fast. You can eat off of it when it's in the younger phase. You can go harvest right off of it and pick a few leaves. You don't have to wait for the full head. So that'll give you all the lettuce you need. Dill is a much longer crop. And some of the things like dill, I'll see people make a huge mistake because it grows well in the tower and it can grow for a very long time. People leave it in the tower and what will happen is it'll get super huge and it'll take over and it'll make a giant mess because how much dill can we actually eat, right? So you kind of need to think through that. If I'm going to plant a dill plant, even though it can stay in the tower for seven months, I don't necessarily want it to stay in the towers for seven months. So this is my dill plant and it's pretty small. It's four months old and it's small because I eat a lot of dill. Like I eat off of this multiple times during the week. So it's stayed really small. It's kept it contained. You also want to plant bouquet dill, not standard dill. Standard dill can get really huge. But this is kind of what you're going for. You don't want dill to take up more space than this. How much dill can we actually use? It's a fabulous one to grow in a tower because you can do so many really cool recipes with it. But again, we don't want it. I saw um, someone had posted on Facebook and it was a picture of their dill and it was coming off the tower and topping, touching the top of the kitchen roof and it was like, oh my gosh, look at how giant this thing is, a funny little picture of it. We actually don't want our food to do that. We want to make sure we keep it under control, that we're eating it. And if we're not eating it, then we need to rethink what we're planting and maybe find something else that we can eat every day that would be a little bit more interesting to put in the tower for our diets. And I wanted to share that about the dill just to give you an idea again, like what do you plant? You don't want all lettuce. If you want dill, you don't want to be planting dill every two weeks. You would be, your whole tower would be full of dill and it would be crazy. So you kind of have to gauge what do I eat, how much I eat. And some of that may just be a learning curve. I am putting together a PDF on some of the timing of these that I will share when I get that ready. So maybe look in the link below and eventually on the website, it'll come up. But I know for me, dill is four months max. So I've just determined that one is right at four months. It's starting to change the leaves that it's producing because I've eaten off of it so much that it's starting to become stressed. Stress in a plant is going to force it to want to bolt, which is create a flower to turn into seed, to you know pass on its genetics and a seed to the next plant. And I know that about dill. So I started dill probably a month ago and have smaller dill plants already growing in my towers, ready to replace that one. So in another week or two, those will be big enough that I can go ahead and harvest all of that dill and dry it and use it for dried dill in the kitchen or go ahead and ferment something and use it in a ferment. And then I have an open space for one of these Salanova lettuces. These will be ready in about the same time, another week or two, to take that spot. So that's kind of what we're trying to do is think about what do we eat and then what is the time frame on those. There are some guidelines that I have found worked. And I'll go through those really quickly. Lettuce, like I mentioned, you want to be starting lettuce every two weeks. Kale, if you eat kale like you eat lettuce, 
start kale every two weeks. If there's another green that you tend to eat an enormous amount of that's a fast growing green, spinach, spinach takes a little bit longer. So you may want to start more spinach than you think you need. Another green would be mustard greens. Those greens grow really fast. So those you could have on a two week cycle if you eat a lot of them. If you don't eat as much kale as you eat lettuce, then you may want to plant two kale seeds every month out of your eight instead of every two weeks. Or maybe you do one kale seed every two weeks and that kind of tapers it so that there's always a kale in a different stage of growth for you to harvest from. So that's what we're trying to think of. Herbs are not a green that's gonna be a super fast turnover like your kales and your lettuce. I like to think of my herbs on a four month cycle or a quarterly cycle. So those you can plant maybe a seed every month and that's gonna depend on how much you eat. I eat a ton of parsley and love to have a large amount of parsley. So I start parsley every single month. Dill, I don't have to start it quite as often. Cilantro, same thing. I use a ton of cilantro. So I'm typically starting cilantro seeds every single month. So I, kn so I know that I never have a time when I go to get cilantro and it's not there or it's not big enough to start eating off of. Things like tomatoes and peppers, I put those on a quarterly schedule. So I want to be starting tomato seeds, pepper seeds, eggplant seeds about every three months and just depends on however many I want. If I have one tower, I may only want to have two or three patio size or pot size tomatoes because I don't want to take up my whole tower. I want to have lots of space to grow other things as well. Squash is another one that I start every month because squash is one of my favorite foods, zucchinis particularly, and sometimes they don't do great indoors in a garage with the temperatures going up and down so much. It gets really cold in this garage, even though I keep the heat on, I keep it on very low. So I have just found, I'll just start a seed, one seed every month. And that way, if something happens to my zucchini plant, I have another one ready to go. And if this sounds complicated, I promise it's not. Worst case, you just plant eight seeds. And if you end up with too much of one thing, you eat it. And if you end up not having any cilantro and you wanted cilantro, you learn the next time, okay, I need to be planting more cilantro. And that's just how I learned. It's just through doing it so much that I know now, okay, I'm ready for certain foods that aren't in here. I need to get those started. And I want to make sure I never go without lettuce that I can take out for lunch and for dinner every day. So those are a top priority too. I went and grabbed some seeds. There is some information on your seed packets too that can help. If you decide to do cabbages, you want to find a short season cabbage, so something like 55 days. Otherwise, it can be 89, 99 days, and that's a really, really long time to be taking up space in your aeroponic system. But your seeds will tell you, this is that cabbage I pulled out. Oh no, this one's different. This one's a winter choy. And this says it takes 10 to 14 days to sprout. So if I were to plant this today, it's not even going to be sprouted in two weeks when I'm starting some of my other seeds. That's why it's important to stay on top of this because it takes time. It's just a process. And this one doesn't say on the package how fast this one grows, but I can look on the website and it does tell me on there. So I do intentionally look for things that grow faster just so I can keep a really quick turnaround. Here are some other things I'm going to plant just to give you an idea. Kamatsuna. This is really high in vitamin C, so I'd like to have that one. Wasabi leaf mustards. Yum. This is one of my favorites. This one I would say is ready in about two months of being in the tower. But you'll see this on my tower a lot in the winter months. And this one takes 10 to 14 days to sprout. I would say I started eating off of this one a month after it was in my tower. And I will do a full harvest. Like if I waited until it was the optimal size to pull it out before it starts getting too big and wanting to go to seed, I would say it'd be about two months start to finish in the tower. So I can start eating off of it after a month. I can harvest it at five weeks, six weeks, if that's the only thing available, and just keep rotating these seeds in. I start these seeds, because it's a 10 to 14 day sprout cycle, I would say at least every month, I wanna have a couple of these going in. Gorgeous purple bok choy, just to give you guys an idea of some things to grow. 
So that's the formula, guys. Take a fourth, whatever a fourth is of your growth spots and start that many seeds every two weeks. You really can't fail. If you end up with too much of one thing, then you just get to eat it. And we don't have to be afraid of eating things before they've reached their prime either. So tonight, for example, I have some things ready to go in my tower and I don't really have any spots. So I'm gonna harvest some lettuce that's not as big as it could be, but it's still gonna be super tasty and this feeds us and this keeps me from going to the grocery store. And this cost me 49 cents to grow. So it's okay if I harvest it a little bit younger and go ahead and take that spot to put the next round of food in. And that was just the concept I wanted to share with you guys today so that you are continuously eating the freshest, most nutrient dense food every single day if you're using one of these towers to grow food, especially indoors during the winter. To end this, I just wanna take you guys on a tour of my towers and just show you a few of the things I have growing. It's January 16th, so in the middle of the winter, the abundance that I have here in this garage and the beauty of some of this food. This tower, I have some zucchini. I have some of the Chinese cabbage. Salanova lettuce. This is a bok choy mustard combination. Here's some baby greens. Kales, collard greens. There's that cabbage I pulled out earlier. Massive, absolutely gorgeous. This is the tot soy. These are great because you can just come out and pick them like this. On this tower, I have cabbage, all different stages, broccoli and collards. There's that dill we were talking about. And if you go down underneath it, there is the replacement dill I mentioned. So I know this dill is on its way out. It's starting to get these different leaves. That saying, I'm ready to go to flower and it's time. So I can harvest this over the next week. And I have another guy ready to go. This one will be twice that size in another week. I have some snap peas that are starting to produce. And this is one that I'm about to plant a lot more of. So right here is my celery. And I just wanted to quickly mention celery. So celery is slow to get going and to get to a good size. And it will grow on the tower over and over and over again. So I can cut this and it'll grow back. I never recommend doing that. And there's a couple of reasons why. For one, this root system of celery gets massive and it's kind of pointless to let it take all those roots up inside the tower, sucking up water and nutrients just to grow back the same plant when we can just start over. If we planted this every three months, for example, started new seeds, then I can just take this whole thing out, harvest it, put a new one in, and I don't have to worry about that massive root system sucking up more water and nutrients than it's worth. It's also been known to crack people's systems because the roots can get so big and just so out of control that people have actually damaged their uh, grow pod just by letting their celery stay in there and stay in there too long. So I recommend grow celery. It's amazing. It's the best snack. I juiced a bunch of it yesterday and eat it and then start over. You've got new seeds ready to go. So you aren't afraid to just pull this whole thing out, turn it into soup or cream of celery or whatever you like to do with your celery. Juice it every morning. We know celery juice is super nutritious. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video inspired you to plant more seeds and eat more vegetables.